a podcast from producer paul.co.uk. Insane in the membrane. How are you, man? You good? I'm good, so how are you? I'm good, I'm good. This is how we Thanks start. Thanks so much for this. Ah, dude, I've been meaning to get on for ages. I've been meaning to get on for ages. Well, here, we here we are. Here we are, because um, uh, big fan of your work. And, oh. uh, yeah, very funny, man. And uh, I'm just, I just want to find out more about you. I want to find out your back because there's science involved somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I heard that. <laughs> Unfortunately, at, at some points, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what science is it? What, are you an actual scientist? Yeah, so um, I've got a dual core engineering degree. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an electrical engineer and I'm also an electronics engineer. Are you really? Yeah, uh, and that's why I left the country. I was just <laughs> too intense. It's just full of us. <laughs> Everyone's got to say, yeah, two a penny. I, whatever. Ba- basically, because uh, my, my mom and dad are both engineers. So okay. One of them is an electrical. Uh, uh, my dad's an electrical engineer. My mom's an electronics engineer. So when I was growing up, I was like, uh, yeah, I guess I want to do both. <laughs> right. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is the thing, like, like in this country, when they talk about, like, where are you from originally? Oh, I'm I'm from India. I India. grew up in Delhi. Uh, my family is from the north of India. Yeah, this is what annoys me about certain people in this country, certain uh, people, and the way they talk about India is so derogatory and so. And you're like, yeah, but you haven't got a fucking engineering degree. So <laughs> what are you talking about? Like I've seen this before when I've been when I've been elsewhere, other countries, and I've been with people that are rude to the wait staff, and they're, and the wait staff are chatting away, and they're like, their English isn't their first language, and these people <laughs> are really fucking rude. I'm like, hang on a minute, this person here speaks as far as we know. We already know they speak more than one language. You don't even speak English properly. So how the fuck are you being such a dickhead? To these people, yeah. it blows my mind. It blows my I mean, mind, you know. I'll, I'll be honest with you. If uh, somebody don't, doesn't talk to me in proper English, I'm just like, fuck off. <laughs> 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 well, I'm gonna go then. I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing. I'm messing. I'm messing. <laughs> um, no, no, I, I get that. It's it's kind of a thing. It's but I it's I think it's it's like a cultural thing because like in India, there's uh, it's at certain places, well, a lot of places, there, there's a certain amount of bias as well. Okay. So it's it's not like it's like a one sided thing. It's just you know like you we grow up. Our history lessons are basically how we got colonized for two hundred years. Oh yeah. So there's like this this repressed kind of like annoyance as well. That, yeah. That's why even you'd see people who'd be like third generation Indians, you know, their grandparents or their parents, second generation, their parents were uh, from India and they grew up over here. They'd still support India in cricket. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, cause like you just said, because I was brought up to be taught that uh, the British were the kings of everything. The, you know, we just ruled every. We went around. We were, we went around, and we were just helping everybody. Because <laughs> you know I mean? up until then, you know, you had nothing. Everyone elsewhere had nothing. It was us Brits that brought you everything, and you're like. But now you get. Now you do like proper research and proper. You hear the real stories. You go, oh fuck no, we were just running around stealing. <laughs> just. I mean, look, I nobody can deny it. Like the British were good at management. <laughs> <laughs> Very good at PR. <laughs> Yeah, you can, you can, you can. Hit, like people are like, "Oh, how did they manage to do it?" I was like, "They did," and you, you have to accept it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't good for the world, no. But no, no. Considering we're such a shitty, not a shitty. There are good. There's good bits. There's good bits to this. But um, considering we're such a tiny place, we and I've done a lot of damage. It's, really. I. This is, I, I remember some of this because I when I was growing up, I was a geek. I didn't have a girlfriend until I was like 24. That's like what, mm. seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I used to read a lot of books and I remember uh, one of our course books, uh, history course books. Um, so what they do in India is like you study history in school as a general subject for like six years. Mm. So maybe year six or year five, you start studying it. And they split it out. So once like early history, which is, you know, cavemen, you learn how fire was discovered and stuff mm. like that. Then there's medieval history about kings and queens and whatnot. And then you have modern history, which is basically colonialism and everything. And um, the when we started studying uh, like modern history, there was a bit where it said uh, over the course of like the next few chapters or stuff like that, 
we're going to understand how an island country uh, like you know the Great Britain uh, managed to conquer more than half the world. Those were the exact words. Wow! And it's it's but it's it's something to like. Yes, there's goods and like the mostly bad bits, but it's still like something to learn from. Like how did that happen? Yeah, it's, a, it's a, when you think back, and this is what people I've noticed this recently. This is what. Hang on, my Siri on my phone's decided to not now. <laughs> Sorry this, about that. This is literally why I have an Android because my last name is Suri. Every time somebody says that, it just gets screamed. <laughs> just phones going off everywhere. What That's now? <laughs> Every single day. <laughs> so what? Uh, but this is so. I guess people I know now, like family members that have been stood in front of me, going, "Ah, oh, this country. We used to be great." You know, we went around, people feared us. You know, that's not a good thing. That's not a good <laughs> thing at all. Why are you, Why do you want that? And it's, it's, it's yeah, so that's what people are harking back to now. Yeah. And yeah. It, you know, and you're, it, it might, did you, I mean, that, like, so you, you know, you, you like you say, you, you know, your, your relatives sort yeah. of, you know, they were, they were more, you know, they, they sort of bore the brunt of it, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. And it, mean, so that must have been tricky to deal uh, with. It was it was it was weird because like uh, so my my dad's family is uh, from Pakistan. Mm. Um, so when there was this whole uh, partition thing happening, when Indian Pakistan split up, so uh, my granddad like basically my dad's whole family had to like uh, emigrate to uh, India. Mm. And when I used to have these conversations with him, he was really you know passionate about it. Because he, he was a part of the actual, you know, the freedom struggle and everything. He used to tell us stories about how they were like two of his cousins, they were twins. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I laugh at it, it's pr probably pretty serious. But one of them was the more notorious one. So he used to mess up with like the British and they'd be protests and he'd be like stone, you know, like brindos and everything. And the nice twin used to get arrested. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I suppose it's easy to get him. They, they, they couldn't understand why he was walking around so casual. There was a point where I thought, like, maybe he didn't realize they were being racist and they just weren't twins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was actually the thing. And I used to have these conversations with him, and it was like the kind of stories he used to tell me, they were, they were pretty intense. Mm. Like, I remember because when. So it was the whole religion thing, right? Because uh, they, I think at some point Pakistan declared themselves as like, um, um, they had a state religion. Like, you know, Christianity is, is the state religion in a lot of European countries. Yeah. So a lot of uh, Hindus like emigrated to India because India at that point was secular. <laughs> um, and what they were doing was apparently, uh, they didn't have any supplies. So no, nothing to eat, nothing to drink or anything. And most of the supplies they would get on the route were being poisoned. So oh, they were told, just don't eat, you know, any apples or oranges. Oh, my God. So they they, they did like a, a day's worth of train journey or two days worth of train journey, like starving themselves just to be able to make it out alive. And it's just, you heard these stories and it was mm. like, wow. And I'm there like eating like, you know, a chicken kebabs. Like, oh, that's so <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that? Do you want some? <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. The, the, I, I still find even this morning I find myself a bit literally just before we did this I was moaning but I'm like ah oh, oh, the fuck you know, trains and travelling I have to do <laughs> and then well then you hear a story like that you go yeah I'm alright actually there was a vending yeah, there was a vending machine <laughs> well it's it's, it's, it's a, like yeah it's, it's a learning experience so you know mm. you pick up these things the most um <laughs> The most troublesome bit was uh, when I first came to India. Look, I first came to London and I was traveling back to India for the first time. Um, I'd started dating someone. Um, it was in, she was uh, Irish and coincidentally white as well. <laughs> um, and the first time I went back, it was a little bit tricky to uh, have this conversation with my granddad because he's like, did you manage to find someone? I was uh -huh. like, well, I think so. And he was like, is she white? I was like, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, those British. I was like, no, no, she's yeah. Irish. He's like, no, oh, they're all white. I was like, ah, you're being racist now. How do I explain this to you? This, this is not how we did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she, was, I mean, was, imagine if they had a conversation, she'd probably say the same about the British. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I think that's how we fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 it was, it was, it was. I, I think I like to think she fell in love with the, my personality. Uh, of course, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a wonderful personality. Actually, that's why, that's why we're friends, mate. That's why we're friends. So you, all, just, go on, go on. No, no, I was just gonna fanboy at you. That's why. You say what? I was just going to be like fanboying at you. It's like, cause you I, I've told you the story. Like, you know, I, you, we started this conversation and you were like, oh, I'm a big fan of your comedy. And in my head, I was like, well, you're one of the reasons why I started doing it. Oh, mate. So, I, oh. It's, 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 it's always like, you, do you remember the first time we met? Uh, I think it was our little smash at the mm, Alex. Yes. And I was, you, you were sitting in the audience. I was like, oh my God, is that Rich Wilson? <laughs> Oh mate! Oh bless you! That was a good night. That. Oh, I was. Uh, I still have it on. Like I record the whole thing. <laughs> That's a good gig. I like that gig. It's it's a lovely gig. I'm oh, doing it this evening. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh um, really? I, it's not. It's not at the Alex, but I'm doing it at a new venue. Uh, it's called the Seafront uh, nice. in Southern. Nice. Are oh, you with uh, Marcus Birdman? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm really excited about that one. He's a top dude. You'll enjoy it. That's that'd be another great night. Um. But so yes. so you so you studied to be a scientist, and then you went fuck that. I'm going to be a comedian. No, there was like another degree between that. Okay, okay. What was what was the next one? I was um, it was like an IT MBA thing, like a business information systems wow. uh, thing. That's how yeah. I ended up in London. I I came here for my masters, um, and then I did that, um, and then by the time I graduated managed to get a job so i was like oh my god i can make money <laughs> um, <laughs> so i i stayed back um and then i started dating um the, the lady and we were together for some time and then there was a breakup and that's basically i it was it was acrimonious in the sense like it wasn't a bad breakup but me being like i was in a different country my my friend circle my support circle was completely different to what i grew up with so I kind of spiraled down into like this weird depression, alcohol, like the usual yeah, stuff. Right. And, yeah. And um, I, was, I started to come out of it. Um, that's when I started going to Up the Creek um, and started watching comedy. And uh, like I said, you were one of the, the two people that I used to go to Up the Creek just to watch. It was you oh, and Daniel Kitson. You guys used wow. to, I think, the resident MCs at, at the point. Yeah, uh, we do it quite a bit. Oh, mate. That's, that's yeah. the one and only time I'll be in the same bracket as Kitson. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I think I'm no, aware. I, I, <laughs> you guys are, to me, you, are, you both are equally amazing. I just, oh, mate. That's, that's how it goes in my head. Thank you. And then I started dating someone else. Um, and when we was broke up, that was like the turning point. Right. Where I was like, yeah, I need to get my shit together. Mm. And I've always wanted to do comedy. So I just Googled open mic nights um found one i went down to watch how it goes uh and then the next week i booked a spot um it was at this place called the lion's den it's still going it's, yeah i know that um, one yeah 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 um yeah and that's that's basically what kicked it off nice. and then one gig a week and then people are like you should do more than two gigs a week <laughs> and then you know you get addicted and it's like, do I do cocaine? Do I do comedy? <laughs> Comedy's cheap. <laughs> it's much cheaper. Well, it used to be. <laughs> Train fares now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might be you just get yeah. a really big coke habit and just uh, just do videos from my room. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> that is the dream. That is the dream. <laughs> <laughs> but what I find what I find amazing, and I did a, I did a gig the other week, and everybody that was on. I think every, I think ninety percent of the acts were from another country, and I was watching, and I was just like, not only are these people doing comedy, but they're doing it in a second language, and I found that I find it, I find it mind blowing that you know that people can do that. It's yeah. I mean, and I don't mean that in a patronising way. I just mean it. You know, how do you find it? Because the nuances and the and the is it is it just the same is or you know the the differences there yeah. are differences and it's language is basically one big thing but mm -hmm. then also like where you do it like I can do comedy in English in India right. but it's going to be different like the jokes are going to be different mm. and you know everything and then it's it's not even just like we talk about different things but it's like how you say it. 
Because the one thing I realized, uh, which is, I think it's, I'm, I'm just an idiot, I picked it up late. Um, but it's like, what word you actually use to, you know, describe something or yeah. like what you're trying to say. But then when I'm doing it, I'm doing comedy in the UK, it's like, the slang is different. The local slangs are different. Yeah. So you have to understand this. It's like, I still, I'm not comfortable using the word mate. You know? No, really? I just, I, I'll be like, I'm, 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 I still use dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude works. I like dude. So it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's more like, it rolls off the tongue easily for me. But like things like those, like, uh, because I grew up watching a lot of American sitcoms. So it's, it's, it's like, Bucks was the one thing. It's like, oh no, we have to say quid. So things oh, yeah. like those. Yeah, the, yeah, picking yeah. up so just knowing the English language isn't enough. Like being able to pick the local slangs and everything. Yeah. It's it's but it's good though. Um it makes makes at least in my when when I'm on stage or when I'm trying to do comedy, I'm more aware of, you know, uh what comes out of my mouth. Right. Most uh, more I'd like to think most of the times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think more people should be more like that. Um are you are you so are the rhythms the same? It, 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 do you know what I mean? Because I remember seeing, I went to a Polish comedy night and I didn't understand what they were saying because it was all in Polish, but the rhythm was the same. So it was like, da 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 big laugh, and then a tag yes. on the end, da 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 another laugh. So is it, the, is it a similar thing? Yes, yes. I, I, I mean, I've not done, so English is like my third language. So I, I speak Hindi and I speak Punjabi right, and right, right, English. Right. And I've not done much comedy because I started doing comedy in London. Oh, okay. So right, I, right, right. I've done a handful of gigs in India, but it's always been like a mix of uh, Hindi and English. Right. But when I do watch uh, uh, like Indian comedians, um, yes, there is. Like, because you, it, and I only started noticing it after a while, but yes, there is a rhythm. Like you can, you can pick the beats up. Mm. And it's not even with the joke structure, but you're like, the punch is coming. Yeah. You know, or not even the punch, the laugh is coming. Right. And you can even see it on the performer's face. It's like, yeah, they knew about it. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's like, it's, I mean, people use the word rhythm and beat and everything, but it is literally like music. Yeah. Where, you know, it's, it doesn't matter what language you're singing in. It, it, well, it does. I'm, I, I'm kind of fucking up the music nuance. <laughs> <laughs> this guy comes in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's similar. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I thought because you could like I say yeah I didn't understand what they were saying but I could I could hear what was happening the 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 build up to it and then the punchline and then the tag afterwards on top of the punchline I was like oh okay yeah 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 but did, going, yeah. are you so has, has, did, so you know like it's again I'll take the music analogy it's, it's bad but I'll go with it um it's like you know when you listen to music like a song in like a different language mm. like a lot of you know the, the Spanish or like even French songs you're able to pick the emotion up. I, I, when you watch comedy yeah. in a different language, are you able to like pick, pick the, the energy up? Like when you're watching and listening? Uh, yeah, the energy, yes. Even because I found myself smiling, even though I didn't know what was being said. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, I imagine that was really funny. <laughs> 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 and, I can, and then, you, then there's the odd word that you do know. You kind of yeah. go, oh, right, that's, oh, okay, all right, I see what they're talking about. Or you'll be with somebody and they'll go, oh, it's a joke about this, this, and this. And you go, ah, oh, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, okay. So, and I think that's, I think it, it was just fascinating to see. I love, I love, I'm really, I, I love languages. I just wish I could speak more than one. <laughs> I just could never pick it up. I could never do it. I don't know. I mean, uh, you know. In, in English is pretty, pretty good as well. It's like, that's why I left the country. I was like, <laughs> couldn't speak the other two. I was like, English, I can. Oh, really? <laughs> they're, they're hard work. I'm going to do this one. <laughs> there are too many alphabets. I'm, I'm happy with 26. There's so many alphabets. Um, it's, it's like... <laughs> but over here, over here now, we're now in, this, in the middle of a huge wave of talking about mental health. People are a bit more aware of taking care of their mental health. Yeah. And... Uh, and, and which is a good thing it's you know absolutely because you know there's been generation after generation of people that especially men well you know men and women i'm not all, all genders that yeah. haven't really discussed it before not on this level and yeah. i'm just do you know is it the same back in delhi is are they are they having this similar conversations or is it yes is, yeah it's it's opening up now mm. but like I, I like I like to think that I'm I, I'm a, I'm a part of the the transition generation. Yeah, you know I'm I'm a part of the generation that grew up with it, uh, 
you know, landline telephones, then we saw the mobile phones. Right. And now that I'm an adult, I see the smartphone. So I've seen that transition. And I think that is a culture-wide thing. So it, it applies to a lot of other things outside of technology as well. And like mental health is a big thing. Mm. Like uh, when, I, when I was growing up, I don't think people talked openly about, you know, having therapy or going to a therapist. No. And I, I, the, even the term therapist didn't exist. You know, they'd be like psychologists. And if somebody went ahead and be like, oh, I'm going to the psychologist. They'd be like, oh, you're going for psychotherapy. Like, mm-hmm. it, was, it, was, it was a taboo kind of thing. It's like, oh, this, 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 this guy goes to a psychologist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, there was an assumption that there was something def- you know, something wrong. Yeah, Whereas, and, uh, yeah where you just trying to, sometimes you just need to recalibrate. It's, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy about it because uh, uh, that, that just means that, you know, as, as society, we are evolving. And it's, 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 it's a global thing, not just a cultural thing. Mm. Where, because I, I don't, I'm not a fan of, you know, I don't like stereotypes. No. But sometimes some stereotypes, you can, you can understand why, where they come from and how they get perpetuated. Yeah. Like I grew up in Delhi um, and it's like one of the five, uh, six metropolitan cities now, which is so uh, Delhi pretty much, we'd catch up on all the global trends. Like if something was cool in London, we'll probably get it in like two or three years and yeah. you know, it'll be there. But then when people talk about, oh, India is like so rural and, you know, the village people and everything. I don't like that because that's not something I grew up with. No. But I do, I do know that outside of that bubble of Delhi or like, you know, the... Like you have London, Greater London, so we have National Capital Region. Outside of that, those things do exist. Yeah. And they need to be discussed about. It just hurts. But now, like, it is it is becoming a good thing. It is becoming a big thing that people are more open, uh, you know, discuss and yeah. more averse to be like, yeah, maybe you're not the crazy one. And, you know, there is something that people can do to help you. Yeah. I think that's it. I think we're now coming away from that assumption that, there has to be something drastically wrong with you. Whereas, yeah. it's, like we said, it's just the case of I don't feel right. I need to. I need to. I need to talk to someone to help me feel better. And I think because I think everybody. This is what I've learned from being lucky enough to have travelled around a lot. Mm. And I've said this before on here. People are fundamentally the same. Different cultures, yeah. different ethnicities, but yeah. on, a, on a on a fundamental level, we're all pretty much the same. Yes, you know? I agree. Completely agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I always use, <laughs> I always, so I'm, so my family is from the north of India. So there's like my summer vacations, basically, I used to spend two to three months uh, up at my grand grandparents' place every year. They, oh. My mom and I were just like, oh, stay away from this. <laughs> <laughs> We've had uh, too much of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so there was an element of like me growing up in the north as well. And I'm going to say this now, people uh, from the north are, that shit crazy. And I'm not saying North of England, North of India, any part of the world. If you come from the North of any place in the world, you're fucking mental. <laughs> Apologies to our thing. Northern listeners. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, in a good way. I'm, I, 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 I put myself in that category. Cause like the first time I went to Manchester, uh, one of my mates, he was staying in Macclesfield. Yeah. And I went there and I was like, you know, the comparisons, people up North in India love their chicken. Oh, people up north in this country love their chicken. People up north in India love their rum and whiskey. <laughs> Manchester, like, we're literally the same people. We just, like, you know, once one side, we just have a different tan. <laughs> <laughs> do you think there's something about... Maybe, yeah, the, the people from the north do seem to have a more... They seem to be more chilled out as well. Yeah. A more open, maybe... I don't know. Maybe I'm dealing with stereotypes again, but they do seem more chilled out and more open to things rather than kind of down down south seems a bit more tight and a bit more yeah, closed in maybe. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the same. Uh, like in India, um, if you go down, like one of the southern states, um, Kerala, uh, well, three of the main southern states, one of them has the highest literacy rate, like 93% wow. when I checked the last time. Like, they're all educated. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, and there's, there's, there are a bit uptight, like, um, yeah. but it's uh, back to what you just, like what you were asking. I was like, yeah, I think it's people around the world are just the same. It's just nuances and differences yeah. in culture and everything that we grow up with. 
but you know if if i if i am to go to like if you go to if you go to north india uh if you go to india and people are like oh where's the place where i can find the most loud and lovely bunch of people who just get drunk and start hugging everyone you will like just go to the north yeah Which right i think it's the same over here this is like <laughs> I, I I went to I went to uh, when when I was in Macclesfield the very first trip. I me and my mate. It was just the two of us. So it was just like we watched the Man U game. This was fucking oh man. This was so far back. I think two thousand two thousand fourteen. Wow. Um, and we watched the Man U game, and it's like, oh, do you want to? It's like, yeah, of course, I want to get drunk. <laughs> um, and then we went in there, and there we were ordering at the bar, and there were a couple of guys, and they just looked at us, and they're like. You're not from here, and we're like, ah, oh, we're gonna get beaten up. And they're like, oh, we got tourists, come on in. And they just asked us to join their table, <laughs> and then we're getting drunk with this random group of people, and they were the most amazing bunch. They were buying us, you know, shots, and every time we went, it's like, no, 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 you're you're our guest. Wow, like, what? <laughs> it's amazing. Well, and, but it's, it's the same. Yeah, it is the same, and, isn't it? Yeah, and you you go to India, that's 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 the same. I I remember uh, so in India. The, the we share border with Pakistan, right? So there's this ceremony near one of the uh, gates, where it's an even. Every happens every day, and you you find people. And I remember there was this one. I was with there with my mates, and we made friends, and we made a couple of friends from Pakistan. Um, and they were like, "If you come, ever come over, they just give give me my get their number, their address. Wow. Like you have to stay at my place." I was like, dude, I just met you five minutes ago, <laughs> and they're like, nah, nah, you just you you you're one of us. Like, you have to come, and it's like this is. I remember my first one of my first ever friends when I was growing up, Arahan Danji. And Arahan Danji was from Pakistan, yeah, and he and I used to swap our sandwiches, so <laughs> he would have my. Horrible 1970s white bread, <laughs> mild cheese, margarine, sweaty awfulness. And I would have his spicy meat sandwiches. And I'd never tasted anything like it in my life. It was incredible. And he used to love mine. He's like, oh, these are amazing. I don't taste of anything. <laughs> Ah, oh, do you want to believe like a cheese toastie in India is like a delicacy? Like you only have it on special occasions. I'm just saying. <laughs> Birthdays and other yeah, well, other holidays. Yeah, it's, it was it was it's, it's amazing, and I I think that's that's one of the reasons why I like comedy as well because it it got me out of a dark place. But I've met so many amazing people. Mm. Like I I had this uh, I had a chance to talk to Tez Elias. Um, yeah right. But he was doing his Cameron French show, and I like he was there, and I was like, after the show, he was just sitting, and he's such a nice guy. He just you know chills. Like people come down to see him, and he'll be like, okay, if if you want to talk, I'll talk. And so his family is from Pakistan, and we were talking, and turns out like uh, his family and my grand, like my dad's family, basically, are from the same place. We no. were just trying to figure out which village it was. <laughs> And, it's, and you, that's that's the beauty of comedy. It's just like I've met so many amazing people that you know I I don't think like this conversation. Yeah, you know, it's this like even outside of comedy, we've been on a train ride or two. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we've yeah. We talked about music. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. I've met like you, like, I, you know, I I knew Arahan when I was a kid, but very rarely did I meet anyone that was from elsewhere, from other places. And through hmm. comedy, I've got friends in all manner of places now, all over the, all over the world, and that's all through making people laugh. And that's what. Yeah. That, so now, when, and now I'm just saying it. Now I'm like, why was I was moaning this morning? Like, well, oh, fuck. <laughs> you. But now I'm like, yeah, listen to yourself, you fucking privileged dickhead. You've got friends all around the world. You've travelled. You've done things. You're having this conversation now. You fucking sort yourself out, knobhead. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you're like I have. I, I'll say this now. If I say if I'm in a room full of comedians, and if I say the name Rich Wilson, not once have two things, right? Not once have I ever heard a bad thing, and every time I I say a name, there's always a smile on people's face. No oh, man, like that's that's the kind of reputation you're working with. Yeah, that's so nice. it's just like oh, it's because we we I was I was doing this gig the other day, um, so it was um, Kate Checker, uh, uh, Kate McGann. And uh, the two uh, Pete Wilson, like it was, it was just like a, a, a gig, gig. Yeah. 
and uh, we were just discussing the recent gigs we've done and I think uh, Kate McGann was like oh I, I, I just gigged with the rituals and the other day and he fucking smashed it mm-hmm. and I shit you know Kate Cheka and I and it was just like oh I fucking love rituals <laughs> <laughs> oh that's nice man well I mean, um, let me blush, man. Oh, ah. Let's get back to the dish. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you were talking about earlier about drinking. And was that, I mean, were you brought up uh, uh, yeah. religious? Yeah. 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 Uh, did that go against, was your drinking, did it go against that? Um, Kind of, but yeah. not in the sense like, you know, if you're drinking, you're sinning. Mm. Like, that's that. <laughs> I was about to go on another tangent. That is my ADHD, by the way. I'm, I'm That's alright. Go, go where you want. Because <laughs> uh, it's, it's I'll come to that later. But like when I when I grew up, uh, we my nobody like nobody in my family used to even drink alcohol. Mm. Like I know my my dad used to like before like my mom and dad settled down. He used to, but it was just a conversation that he had with my mom once. My mom was like, "Well, we have a family now." Uh, is there a point to drinking or anything? I don't like it. And my dad was like, fine. I don't, I don't, you know, it's not a thing that mm-hmm. I need to drink and everything. And that's, that's like a cultural thing as well, is in the sense like we drink, but it's more prominent over here in the sense like if we go out, we drink. But in India, it's just like if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it's. Yeah, right. Um, and I, I didn't, I didn't grow up with that. Uh, I did grow up religious, uh, but it was, it was like the thing that, you know, if you drink, alcohol is a bad thing. Mm. But it wasn't like if you drink, you will go You're to hell. Cast out, <laughs> it wasn't, and then, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was. Yeah. It wasn't like that. Um, and then, yeah, and it, pe- people kind of mistake this with like, because a lot of times people ask me, it's like, oh, are you are you a Hindu? And mm. I was like, yeah, I was raised as a Hindu. And they're like, oh, you, you then you must not eat meat or you must not drink alcohol. And I was like, that is a misconception, because <laughs> we have like, uh, if you. Uh, go to like the east of India, like Bengal, West Bengal now. Mm. Um, there are like deities, like gods and goddesses that if you worship them, you offer them like fish. Right. Like the priests would like offer them fishes. And um, there are other gods where um, if you go outside the temple, um, the, the, what's the term? The worshippers. They'll, um, they offer whiskey. Oh, really? Lot. And you sit outside. There, there are people just sitting outside with like bottles and funnels because then you just, you know, offer a bit to it and then everything else comes out to the <laughs> to the worshippers and they get whiskeys. Like. <laughs> so it's like one big sesh. <laughs> basically, literally. It's, that's that's literally how it happens. Like, <laughs> you get, you, you, you're sitting outside and it's, it's, not, it's not like you know, Hinduism promotes alcoholism. That's not what no, I'm no, trying no. to say. But there, it's, it's a part of you know the the religion or the culture mm. but that's not something that i grew up with right and right right which was again when i came to this country a part of the the culture shift that i experienced was you know like uh people 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 at work would be like every thursday you know just go out for a pint or everything <laughs> with someone like me the, the kind of environment i grew up in i wasn't acclimatized to like we I'd, I'd be drink when we used to drink a, we used to hide it <laughs> from our <laughs> folks. And B, it'd, it'd be like maybe a New Year's thing or if somebody's you know, birthday. Right. We right, wouldn't right. be like, oh, yeah, it's Thursday. Let's just go out for a quick pint. Yeah, right. So are there bars and things around that you can go to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, it, it's not, again, as prominent as, you know, in, in, in Europe or like North America, the Western world. Mm. But you do have um, places where you can go and get a drink if you wish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, loads of them. Loads of them. The, uh, apparently. Especially now, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was never that. It, it was it wasn't a part of my upbringing. No, and also like when I was growing up, it wasn't part. It wasn't a cultural thing. Like people drink, people socialize, but it wasn't like oh, there's a bar down the road. Let's get pissed. Yeah, right. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm gonna because I'm trying to I'm trying to cut back because I do I've been drinking too much. I don't drink at home. But I'm yeah. all, because I'm always out, and someone goes, "Oh, do you want a pint?" I go, "Yeah, go on then." Yeah. And because I don't want to upset anyone, I'll go, "Yeah, go on then." And I'll, even when I've gone right today, I'm not drinking. And then I'll go out, and someone goes, "Do you want a pint?" I go, "Yeah, go on then." <laughs> I'm going to yeah. become an alcoholic because I'm too nice to say no. <laughs> that's 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 how it happens. If you're too nice, you, you that's that's how I picked up crack cocaine. It was just like I was. 
I couldn't turn down people. <laughs> I just don't upset anybody. <laughs> but it's 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 the thing. Like um, I, I there was a point where I realized that oh, this is now getting out of hand. How do I keep a check? And then I like like you said, you know, you drink don't drink at home. Mm. I also made a rule for myself, which I which was like, I never drink by myself. Right. It's just a simple thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never drink by myself. But when I was in like the the bad state of mind, then I was just like, I just go to a bar and be like, oh, bartender, sir, you're going to be my new friend. Let's drink together. <laughs> At least you're not on your own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it was, it's, uh, yeah. It's, um, cause when, when I started comedy, I the first three months, I, I, I put this for me. It's like, if I'm doing comedy... I'm not going to be drinking. Mm. So the first three months of me doing, when I started doing like comedy, I I didn't take, like I didn't drink, drink a single sip of alcohol. All right. I was just to keep myself away uh, from all those things. Um, it, it was just, basically what happened was I was dating this girl. She was fucking amazing, fucking phenomenal. Uh, and we were clicking together. But then, she picked up on that as well. It's like if, every time we went out and everything, we were just like, you know, drinking and just, I, I was over, over indulging a bit. Right. And I, I still to this day remember her words and she was like, uh, we're both going to be 30 soon, you know? And uh, I want to be with someone who's like, you're lively and everything and everything, but someone who's a tad bit responsible. Right. And she's like, if I want to, date someone who just goes out and gets pissed every time i just go back to university <laughs> <laughs> and that, that that kind of like struck a note because mm. it, it was like a an intervention but i there was nothing wrong with what she said no nah. it's just like um and that's when i was like i gave myself a weekend and i was like what outside of drinking do i really want to do and i've always wanted to do and stand-up comedy was one of those things and i was like i'm in london you know, yeah. I, I used to, I used to play music back home and I always wanted to like open mic music nights. Yeah. And I was like, I'm pretty sure there's open mic comedy nights. So that's, that's basically the the switch. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's funny because it used to be, you know, back in the nineties or whenever it was when stand up comedy really blew up, you know, like alternative yeah. comedy and they yeah. were still, you know, they, I hear the stories of some of them getting you know, lines of Coke and, and pissed and doing the, and still doing the gigs and but then could you give me the names yeah <laughs> <laughs> no names a speech no no <laughs> but before that before that i mean i i was working with ted robbins the other day and ted yeah. robbins was big like back in the early in the 80s his his niece is now emily atak that's his that's his niece. oh okay and so but him and his sister ted robbins and kate robbins were big way back and and I did a gig with him the other day, and he was telling me all these stories. You know, he was telling me about Les Dawson and uh, Bob Monkhouse and all the all these great people. And he told me all these stories, and they were all drunk. <laughs> it's just, but, but, but I was like, wow. He went, yeah. They, you know, they, they, what happened was they'd either take up golf or yeah. they'd take up drinking, and there was that, and that was it. And I was all these like Bob Monkhouse. Just, like, they were telling he was telling me how much booze he used to do before a gig. Oh, Jesus Christ! I'd be in a coma. I, 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 the thing is, like, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a functional alcoholic. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was just, I, I got, I've, I think I've done, I did throughout, like, and I'm not, I, I talk about, like, uh, since I started doing back in the day. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've not been doing it for long, but, like, throughout uh, my short comedy life existence, I think I've only done two gigs where I went on stage with like alcohol. I, I, that's another one. I think because I'm OCD as well. All right. So I think I can like, if I can place rules on myself, it mm. kind of sometimes makes it easier. Like I've got a rule now that I don't like drink before I go on stage. As simple as that. Yeah, Not a single right. sip of alcohol. Nothing. No. And I was just like, you know, I, if I'm doing three gigs in a, in a day or two gigs in a day, I'll be like, I'm not going to mm. sip alcohol till I'm done with the last one. Right, right, right. So do you drink? Do you still, still drink? I'm, at the moment, I've not had alcohol for like the last two months. Right, right, right. That's good, man. <laughs> I, I mean, holiday season is coming up probably. Oh, God. I oh, know. This is, this is a terrible time for me to go, I'm going to cut back. Um, <laughs> but did it's you... going to make you strong, Rich. <laughs> it's going to make me round. I don't know about anything yeah. else. 
But do you find that drinking helps with your OCD and your ADHD, or doesn't really, um, doesn't really affect either or? It was, either way, it it definitely didn't help with me. No, <laughs> so it, it didn't. Um, um, it was the other way around, and it was also like I I didn't really uh, get diagnosed or pick, get picked up like until like. It's it's more of a recent thing, like right. before comedy, obviously. Mm. Obviously, like yeah. Um, uh, no, it was. Uh, I but I did figure it out later. And you, once you get to know all these things, you can see like how it's going the bad way. Like, um, I I know. So I I'm more comfortable drinking spirits. Like whiskey is my poison of choice. Right. Like I enjoy whiskey, but then in, in my OCD head, it was also like. If I go out on a date and I was like, oh, the last time we met, you know, we had whiskey and it was a good date. So I was like, I have to drink whiskey this time as well. Uh, and it's like those really tiny minor stupid things. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. like when it adds up, it's just like, it's it's not, for me, it wasn't good. No. I know a lot of people who can keep a check on it, which is fucking amazing for them. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm kind of envious. But it's, and I, there, there was a point where I was like, I was I was becoming not like intentionally, but I was becoming like a, a bit toxic person. Right. But it wasn't just I was it wasn't just for me. If it was just affecting me, it would have been fine. Yeah. But once it starts, you know, affecting people around you, you have to be like, no, I need to. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I get a bit too boisterous sometimes, and I have to be told to calm down. So I'm having such I'm having such a good time. But people go, oh, whoa, 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 take it down a few. <laughs> uh, I, I, we definitely have to go out for a drink because I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a happy dr I'm a happy drunk as well. Like I, I'm the kind of guy like once <laughs> once I'm drunk, I'm just like, if I'm drinking, you're drinking. Shots for everyone. <laughs> ah, now see, now that's the difference. <laughs> I can't do shots. That's when the wheels come off because that's i every single time I've ended up doing shots. It doesn't end well. I always wake up and just like, I'll wake up in the morning and be like, still dressed. And you go, oh, well, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's, what happened? No, nah, well, well, at least I didn't have something to eat. And then you go, oh, no, I did. I had six kebabs. And then you go, well, at least, <laughs> at least I didn't upset anybody. You go, oh, fuck. And then you remember the face. You don't remember what you said. You just remember the face of the person that you go, oh, God. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I've said something. What have I said? And then you go through your messages. You're like, oh, my God. I've gone from oh, declaring it's... undying love. Oh, yeah, me and you forever, baby. And then... <laughs> and then well, you know, wrong number. Who this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just throw your phone away. It's happened. I, and, and that's the thing. It was just like... I'm, I'm, I think I'm more comfortable, like, being able to enjoy it now. Mm. Like, I, I know I can, I can keep a check. Uh, and my, my friends are basically like, look, you, you, you behave like a drunk in general. I don't think you need alcohol. <laughs> Everyone always thinks you're pissed anyway. But I would look at my face. Like <laughs> the, the number of times I'm at the bus stop and random, you know, Mercedes or BMW stops in and the guy's like, hey, bro, do you want some weed? I was like, bro, no, I don't. I look like it. You look like, super oh. chilled. That's what it is. You just look super chilled. <laughs> See, okay, and now I know you're being nice. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's what you do. Every time I see you, it's like, yeah, that's super chilled. Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, whatever. thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. And that, that is what I'm going for. <laughs> Say what you like about it, she's been super chilled. Like, inside, I'm just like, fuck, 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 yeah. fuck, I'm going down. <laughs> that's like everybody. That's like me. Everyone goes, you're so relaxed. I'm like, I am inside. I am a bag of turmoil. I am just, just, the other just going on inside. I'm like, oh, fucking hell. Why am I alive? <laughs> People don't realize it. Like you know, even nowadays, if you if you mention stuff like uh, you know social anxiety or like anxiety disorders, mm. sometimes people get a bit iffy. And it's like, no, I'm just stressed out. And I was like, that is a form of anxiety. And the, yeah. the world we live in, I and this is a made up statistics, but I'm so sure of myself. Is this, I think ninety percent of the people suffer from some form of you know an anxiety disorder. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And it's it's they, they keep kind of run away from it like i i have conversations with people who are like they're stressed out and i'd be like have you thought about talking to someone and they'd get like sometimes they get offended it's like well, right. what do you mean and i was like i'm just saying that you know i've, I've been through this yeah 
I'm, I'm not. I'm not being like I know everything about it, but I'm just like maybe it would help. Well, this is it, yeah. Go on. No, sorry. I, just, I, I was just because I think James Acaster he mentioned this on one of his podcasts as well. Yeah. You don't. You don't have to wait for it to be like you know really bad to then seek help or like try it out, which I think is spot, spot on. Yeah. I think it's like you've said. That you, I think the because the world is it feels like it's in such a it's in such crisis at the minute, hmm. and the people that are in charge that we've put we've put in charge. Oh, we're not, we haven't all we haven't all voted for them, but the people that are in charge don't seem to be able. They seem to just making it worse. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, we don't have any leaders. No, this is what we need. We need people to go right. This is what we're doing for the for the good of everybody in the world. This is what we're doing. They're kind of it's like they, it's like there's a dam and there's all these leaks in the dam and they're putting, yeah. and they're just putting their fingers in the holes. You know, yeah. yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. and then more more holes appear, and they haven't got enough fingers. <laughs> you know I mean, with, with the leaders we have, they're probably plugging the holes with the dicks. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their dicks are the people's dicks. Um, yeah, 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 but yeah. that's it's. Um, but I I do understand. I think people are going like it sounds so cheesy to say this every time, but I think people society as a whole is heading in the right direction. Just the pace is really slow. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. really slow. Like you can see, there's there's a turn around the corner, but then in your if you look at it, it's just like it's five minutes away. But the pace where we're going at, it's probably gonna take at least two hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes. It's always funny. I'm glad you said that because I catastrophize all the time. I've realised <laughs> that. I had, I've just finished. I had some counselling for the last couple of months. So I've just had that, and I, I, I was talking about. I, I do. I always go to the most extreme in any situation. I'm like, well, that that'll probably happen. Like the worst case scenario is going to happen. <laughs> and then I read something the other day. They were going, oh, the, the the world has been through however many mass extinctions extinctions before. We are now oh. currently in a in a in a in a new one. And I'm like, fucking hell. All right. <laughs> well, I'm not paying my credit card off then. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a good thing though. Like, um, because my dad always tells me, uh, like, every time, like, I'd, I'd have like a big gig or something, and I'd be like, oh, uh, crap, I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna die on stage and stuff like that. And it, it, that's been, I shoot you not, I I love my folks, but like the kind of realism they've been throwing at me <laughs> since I was a kid. <laughs> Like, I remember I used to go for, like, exams and stuff, and I'd be like, shitting myself. And my dad's like, have you studied for this? And I think, I have studied. And he'd be like, then, do your best and expect the worst. I was like, how is that going to help with my anxiety? <laughs> like, I, I'd write the right answer down, I'd be like, this is probably the wrong answer, I'm going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, it, it, in hindsight, that is kind of a good, like, at least for me, it's worked. Because then, you know, I, I'm just out there doing what I need to and then be like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm the same. Yeah. I always, I'm, I get in my head sometimes, I go, it doesn't matter which decision I make or which which way, which way fork I take, Yeah, it's going to be the wrong one. <laughs> I always take the wrong one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I've, I've stopped following my gut. Like, oh, really? <laughs> I was just like, I don't, I don't, I just like, I just, I just called someone up. It's like A or B. It's like, what are you talking about? It's just like pick one. And then that happens. And if something fucks up, it's like, I call them back in like three months. Yeah, you shouldn't have picked B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting good at, I'm getting good at saying no now. I do. Whereas before I just, I'd go, yeah, all right then. Cause I wanted to please that person. I am better at going, I don't think I'm the person for that job, but I do know someone that might be. And so I push them in that direction. Whereas before I'd just go, oh yeah, all right then, and end up in so much trouble all the time. It's, it's so hard though. Like I'm, I'm of the same, like, uh, would, you, would you classify yourself as an empath? Yes. And I, I would like to think I'm an empath, but like an evil one. <laughs> Like, I, if it's, it, it, it's, I, like, I try to be nice, but sometimes deep down inside, it's just like, maybe I shouldn't have that. Right. 
But like, it's I, I agree with you. It's so hard to say no. Yeah. And that that gets gets you into situations like, like when I when I started doing comedy, one of the main reasons, other main reasons was like I didn't have a social circle, like none whatsoever. Because mm. I I finished my masters, and by the time I graduated, I started dating uh, someone, and so I just let go of all my friends because like oh they've got friends and their their friends are my friends, you know. Yeah, and then when you break up, all the friends just go. It's yes. like you know they, they've taken the kids out of the divorce. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was, I was, I was literally on dating apps trying to make friends. Oh wow! And it was, uh, and then when I got into comedy, it was just like build up a social circle and everything. Yeah. But then there's also this, you know, this this fear of missing out and everything. Mm. Where I'd be like. I know I need to be home in the next hour if I can get some food in, a decent amount of sleep in. But then there'd be someone who's just like, "Why don't you stick around?" And I'd be like, "I can, because I'm not drinking, so it's not, you know, I'm just gonna be sleep deprived. I'm not gonna be hungover." Yeah. But yeah. But that's it. Yeah. This the, there is that that they, they, I've talked about this before. When we had the lockdowns, one of the problems was that we we lost our little universe, all our little people. Yeah. We lost that. Not necessarily the gigs, but we just lost like, seeing each other and being around each other yeah. and that kind of silent understanding that we're all a bit strange because of what we do, we've chosen to do. Yeah. But we kind of understood each other and we were like, yes, this is our people, this is us. Yeah. Yeah. And we lost that. I, I, it, it was, but whatever happened was not a good thing. No. But I think at least, again, I, I say everything from my perspective. So it's like, if I, if I sound a bit like a narcissist, I was like, hey, maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, at least, it helped me, you know, figure out like where, where my friends are and people who I, I can have like a healthy conversation and a healthy relationship mm. with. Because that kind of makes a lot of difference as well. Because there's this term called like, there's, and the energy vampires, I think that's what they call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Social vampires, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and it was just like, th there's a lot of those as well. Yes. And a lot of times you just don't realize because it's really hard to differentiate between if it's a good thing or if you just have a bad habit. Mm. That seems like a good thing. Um, and the whole, you know, being by yourself and lockdown and everything. I, for some of the people that I was, you know, be like talking to and like who I thought were within my like circle. I just realized it's like it was more of a habit kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's not yeah. it's not a bad thing to you know let go of stuff. It's really hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. But sometimes <laughs> it, sometimes there are there it, yes. I mean, it's one thing I learned from this is there are some people in your life that it's just bad chemistry between you mm. it's not and you and, and and you know friendship i've got friendships now that are so effortless that i just yeah. every time i see that person we don't you don't have to pretend to be something you're not there's no yeah. kind of you don't have to do it it's just it's, you just happen to be friends and you're having a nice time yeah and that's how yeah. it should be basically i was like yeah. um they, 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 i i have friends they're like they're like you're a dickhead i was like <laughs> but I'm your dickhead and I was like that is a stupid thing to say but we get it <laughs> and it's, it's also like you know people who get people who help you improve I, I, I don't want to be around people who are just like this is a sheesh he's an idiot but you know you get what you, you know, deal and I, I, I want to be around someone who's just like this is a she's, he's an idiot, but he's a work in progress. <laughs> but that's it, isn't it? We all are. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm just, cause of course there are people in my life, or have been in my life, that think I'm a fucking idiot and would rather yeah. not be around me because it's just that's just what the, how the chemistry was. We're yeah. just human beings. And, and we, you know, you, you're friends to some people, you're enemies to others, and you just that's how it is. It's just... Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, and that's how... And it, you know, enemies is a bit strong. I might, that might be a bit... Mind you... Oh, I, I've got a few enemies. Yeah, yeah, I've got yeah, yeah, yeah. So one, one of these, like, you, you just scroll up. Like, what? That's, <laughs> those are the hit list. <laughs> <Are those, laughs> well, the promoters that have wronged you. Basically, I was just yeah. like, you didn't reply to my email. <laughs> right, you're on the list, brother. <laughs> Fuck you. I, I, the, the, the number of open mic nights I've been banned from. It's just for the most stupidest reasons. What? I um, there, was a, there was one uh, gig I was uh, blacklisted from because 
I showed up late yeah. and I didn't email. I messaged them on Facebook or something. Right. And they didn't see my message. And they were really annoyed. And <laughs> I was at my leaving do. So I was like, right. Yeah. I, and I was like, I'm going to be late. And they're like, you show up late. And the thing I did wrong was I showed up with the thought process that I sent a message. They probably read it. Yeah. So the first thing I did was like, Oh, Hey man, when am I on? <laughs> wow. And they hadn't seen the message and they just yeah. thought you were an arrogant so, uh, piece of shit. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> what I should have done was like, oh, I'm a bit late. My apologies. Um, <laughs> can you still put me on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you didn't know. You'd already, you didn't realize. And then, you, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just a breakdown in communication. But to blacklist you yeah. from the gig seems a bit harsh. I, Fuck them. It's, it's fine. Yeah. I, 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 I learned my lesson. <laughs> Uh, I always email that. <laughs> wow, yeah, that, yes. It's a funny old one. There's, I don't know. Yeah, I, there's one, there's a gig that I can't do or, because uh, someone was emailing on my behalf and they got the name wrong of the promoter. And so <laughs> and his, 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 the beginning of his reply was, firstly, that's not my name. You should probably, you should, and this is all under my name. They don't realise it's someone else emailing for me. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you should, first first rule of comedy is to get the promoter's name right. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even bother reading the rest. I was like, nah, there's like, no, you, there's you're no not going to book me again. I know. Nah, I was like, oh, there's no point in reading this. Just delete. Uh, move on. Have you, have, you, have you ever blacklisted yourself from a gig? Like banned yourself? There are gigs that I won't, that I haven't done because I've heard. I've heard different things from different sources yeah. about the promoter, and I've gone, no, I'm not doing that gig. I'd rather, I'd rather just not do the gig. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. understandable. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm of the like, I've had, I, I've got gigs like those, but then they're also good. I, I did a gig once uh, where <laughs> my name is Ashish, and I, I, I understand it's not like a common local name, so people are bound to mess it up. This one time, I got introduced as uh, Aladdin. <laughs> Aladdin? Did you say Aladdin? Yeah. Wow. What? Like, um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not even a real country, man. Oh my god. <laughs> I wouldn't even mind, but that's not. I've never met someone called Aladdin. That's not <laughs> even like, and there's loads of them. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's. Yeah. I was like, I get that's the name. It's, you know, it's like. I mean, to be honest, my name in Aladdin has the same vowels, so I can understand <laughs> how you like same number of letters, same vowels. Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> but, it's because you turned up on a carpet. That's what threw him. Oh, basically, that that was the thing. You will. Do I didn't. That. I didn't have a beanie. I had like. <laughs> <laughs> Here he comes with his lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Aladdin. Oh God! I was like, yeah, I'm, uh, it was a good gig. I enjoyed it. <laughs> was it magical? <laughs> it, was, it was. It was. It was. It was a miracle. <laughs> did you show them the world? <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> I had to stop when the tiger walked in, but <laughs> no pets. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, oh, this this is not done. <laughs> no. Hey, 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 hey! Come on, man. Is that a guide? Is that a guide tiger? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a therapy tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go anywhere without my tiger. It's just like, it's just like oh. you annoy me, it'll bite you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What a brilliant way to finish. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Where um, can we find you online, Ashish? Um, Instagram, um, yeah. uh, at Scientist Suri. I've, I've, I've been on Twitter for uh, two months. Oh, yeah. Uh, fucking amazing. Uh, I've got 29 followers. Yes, mate. Smashing it. Uh, and only only 20, 20, no, only 19 of them are comedians. So I was like, I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, uh, Twitter's the same, at Scientist Suri. Uh, I am setting up a website. Okay. Uh, so it's who I can progress, but I'll plug it out because you know, two months down the line, you're gonna love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we're ahead of the curve. Basically, I was just like, this, this is this is me being clairvoyant. <laughs> um, <laughs> the website is the same at scientistsuri.com and also she'sui.com. But yeah, That's and awesome. also you know, just if you see me on the streets, talk to me. I don't mind. Just don't try to sell me weed. That's kind of <laughs> and don't touch his no. tiger. Yeah, basically, stay away from my pets. <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounds like such a bad euphemism now. <laughs> Don't stroke his tiger. Don't stroke my dragon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sheesh. Thanks, man. This has been great. A pleasure has been on my end. It's, it's, yeah, I, I can't say this enough. You know? ah, dude. Four years ago, I was sitting in the audience. And to be able to have this conversation with you now, it's, it's for me, it's, it's like a really big thing. So thank you so much for having me. Made my day, man. Thank you very much. Love you. Play it up. I love you. Love you. <laughs>